In this video, I wanna talk about different things that we can use in the shop for sanding. Um, if you're sanding edges, sanding parts of, of your tree for to smooth it out when you're covering it, and leather is a lot like wood as far as once you get everything kind of stabilized and glued together and stitched, you can sand that edge just like you would a piece of wood or anything else. And so a lot of the things that you would use on wood or other materials can also be used in the leather shop. So in this video, we're gonna visit a little bit about different things that I use whenever I'm sanding. All right, so not all of us are, are blessed enough to have a finisher in our shop and a finisher. I used to have a big line finisher in my shop, um, but these are some of the tools that I use every day whenever I'm sanding, um, especially on our saddles, you know, your skirts, you've got to sand the edges of your skirts, your belts, photo albums, virtually anything you make, you're gonna to have to sand the edge. So real simple, the first thing that you can do is buy and check out these little foam sanding blocks that Lowe's or Home Depot sells. I found these a couple of years ago and they're actually really handy and I've got a bunch of them in different grits. They come just like in sandpaper, they come in different grits. They're kind of soft. Uh, some of them are firmer than others. This one here is a, is a coarser grit, but it's more of like a kitchen sponge. It feels fairly soft. So I don't use it a ton if I've got to really work down an edge because um, I want a little bit firmer base in there so that my edge stays true. Um, but those little sanding blocks, they're not very expensive. They're, they're a lot higher than just sandpaper, but they, uh, they seem to last pretty good and they work really well. So you might give uh, some of these a shot and have, have a little group of those on your bench whenever you're sanding smaller projects. The main thing that I use um, is gonna be one of these. And all this is is just a block of wood with uh, their sanding blocks. Um, and if you've done woodwork or anything like that, that's very common is a bunch of different variations guys will make of these sanding blocks for different things. But this is just a two by two piece of piece of wood. So cut it about a foot long or a little bit shorter, whatever you're comfortable with. And then you can take this right here is actually finisher uh, sanding paper. And so, but you can use just regular sandpaper. The finisher sandpaper, if you can find some of that, this is what goes on the, the shoe machines and, and uh, those type of finishers. This paper is a lot more durable and will hold up a lot longer. The, the material that the, the actual grid is attached to is very sturdy and it won't tear. Regular sandpaper from Lowe's tends to tear and, and flake off. And so um, I much prefer that. But then I just nailed it on and stretched it tight and nailed it on the other side. And so that gives me a nice, flat, clean surface. So as I'm edging the edge of something, it's keeping that edge true for a longer distance. If you, the longer you make them, the more true they are, also the more cumbersome they get. But that's the whole purpose of that sanding block is just to keep that edge nice and clean and level and not get any dips or valleys in there as you're going along and edging. The other thing that I use every day is just a dowel rod. You can just get whatever size. You can make multiple sizes of these for different types of, of inner curves that you're trying to sand depending on your needs. But uh, just a dowel rod and then I took another piece of that finisher paper and we just rolled it around there you could glue it on or nail it on, but over the years I've found it's just easier just to have it kind of wrapped around there and then we just stretch it tight and then you can, so you have the ability to get inside an inner curve like on a fender where the leg comes down, you can get in there and sand that out. So these two are kind of my go-tos that I use every day. I also recently bought one of these, which is just a um, palm sander um, and it works fairly decent, but like I said, you can already see this sandpaper here tore pretty quickly um, and so, I don't use this a lot, but it is handy when I do need it um, because I've got, I do have regular sandpaper that I use from time to time. But these two, I've had this finisher paper on here for probably three years and it still works fine. Um, it'll wear out on a finisher because it's moving much at a much higher rate. And so you burn, you burn through it a little bit quicker, but on these hand planes or hand, hand sanders like this, it, it lasts you a really long time. So if you can go to a boot shop and, and buy a chunk of that from them, they come in sheets I don't know the exact actual, actual dimensions, but they come in, in big sheets and then and they come in different grits. So you can buy whatever grit uh, you prefer. So the next thing that's handy to have, especially if you're working on saddles, if you're not doing saddles, you may or may not have a need for this, but there's some files. And um, this rasp here, it, you know, it, it's easy to get one of these. Find a farrier, if you've got a farrier or know a buddy that shoes horses, they probably have a bucket of these in their horseshoe trailer or horseshoe truck that they throw away or take the scrap iron. They, they go through them like crazy. And um, so just be fair warning when you ask them, just tell them you need one because I've had this one for 15 years and it's, it, it'll never wear out for what I use it for. Um, but 
because they'll probably try to give you eight or ten of them just to get them out of their bucket and you don't need that many unless you want that many then go ahead and get them but i wouldn't recommend it the first time i asked for one i got eight or ten and i've still got them somewhere i may have thrown them away but you only need one but but the main side that i use is the smoother side especially on trees whenever on saddles when you nail things into your bars as far as your rigging um, your ground seat things like that sometimes those nails come through the back side of the bar then you can take this you can clip them off if they're really long and then take this rasp and just go over that nail and you can smooth it out to where it's level with the bar so there's not a protrusion coming out of there so they're real handy for that um, the other thing is just a little half round file like this and i really like these especially for if you're working on a saddle tree and sometimes you get them in and they may have some excess resin under here if you're using a fiberglass tree they may have some bumps or just little little garbage under here that you want to get out you can fit that right up in there and you can sand all of that out shape up your horn a little bit if it looks a little a little knobby or, or not quite right um, they're just really handy for a lot of different things and um, and I've used them use these as well on on like the back side of, of uh, different tools and things just to sharpen them up or just to take a little bit of meat off of something or whatever so that's a good one to have the last thing that I'm going to mention is again something mainly for saddle makers and that is a uh, sheetrock rasp um, is what i'm assuming this is called a uh, sheetrock sander anyway these are fairly cheap at lowe's or home depot but they work amazingly well for your binder like on a saddle when you when you have if you're doing a cheyenne roll or even a buckaroo roll you have that excess hanging over or on buckaroo roll you've got it up here and you've trimmed it with your knife and gotten as close as you can then you can come in through here with this and you can take a lot of meat off it doesn't look pretty right at first but you're taking meat off to level everything up then you can come back with your sanding blocks and really shape that up and that's going to shape everything up and get a rough block in so that everything's even and so even if you come through with your head knife and it gets off a little bit you can come in here and you can shape that up to where it looks even sided down from the back I also use it on my horns when i trim my horn i'll go through there with this and just level it up the thing to remember with these is to be careful especially if you've got a brand new blade on here you can buy the replace replacement blades for these at lowe's because it will take off material so you want to be real careful that you're, you're you're being mindful and you're kind of keeping it straight but these are really handy and i use these quite a bit i'll even use them on my skirts occasionally if my blade work wasn't as good as i liked it to be when i was uh, trimming the plugs and I've got a little excess material that I can't get with just a sanding block, I will get it with that. So these are some of the sanding tools that I use in my shop. I'd be interested to know any, any other ideas, any little tips that y'all might have of, of, a, of a cool little tool that you can buy locally that works great for sanding ed edges and everything. It's kind of like cutting. If you're, if you're cutting, you're sanding. You've got to uh, just to get the edge that you want. And a quick little tip too on your belts. If you, if you are, uh, you know, you're obviously cutting your blanks out or buying them, if you're buying them, that's fine. But if you're cutting your own blanks, you're cutting them out with a draw gauge. They're really even. So they're, they're, the edge is really even, really clean. It's not kind of hacked or trim job's not good. But if you really want to step up your edge game, be sure and go over it in the very least with one of these. It just, just to kind of rough up that edge from where that blade went past and just to kind of clean it, make sure everything's even and smooth. Then when you go in to slick it, it'll work a lot better and your, and your slicking will look a lot more professional. You can also go one step further and work your way down in grits on your edges. So on your horn or your skirts or belt or something like that where you really, really want that edge to show off. You can start sanding with your heavier, your coarse uh, sanding paper and then work your way down to the super fine uh, sanding grit. And, and just keep, you know, sand for a little bit and then go to the next one. Sand it some and then drop down the next one. And that, just like in wood, you would step down or step up, whichever direction it is, to the finer to the finer grits. It's going to do the same thing on your leather edges. So that's a, actually a great way to help uh, clean up your edges if you're looking for that really, really top-notch, uh, shiny, glossy edge uh, slicking job. So be sure and, and, and give that a shot. I don't do that on a lot of things. I'll do it on my horn occasionally and stuff like that. A lot of times I just kind of get the edge going and, and, and get it sanded down and I may jump two grits and then and then slick it and I'm happy with what, with what the results I get. So, But occasionally I'll, I'll go ahead and experiment and kind of really, really fine tune it and go down to some really, really small uh, or tight grit on my sandpaper to get that good finish.
But anyway, that's everything about sanding as far as sanding tools. If you got any questions, let me know. If you got any suggestions or, or new little things that you found that are great for sanding edges and keeping those clean, remember to practice on your knife work. If you read our blog post on the five essential tools for the beginner craftsman, um, I'll put a link to that in the description. I talk about that in there, but your knife, your knife skills are by far one of the most important things as a craftsman and that will in turn help you to not have to use a lot of these tools as much because if you can get to where you can cut your parts out smoothly they're fluid your liners butted up against you know when you when you trim your liner it's perfect they're both both at the same distance you can do a really good job and really speed up your edging and your slicking so I thank y'all for watching. If y'all have any questions, let me know. Shoot me an email. Be sure and subscribe while you're here. And if you need anything, let me know. 